Gute! This video is part of my Raspi from A to M video series. I will put links with more information on that series in the description box below. And the topic today will be to connect Raspi's voice assistant toolbox with Home Assistant, which is a famous open source smart home software. So by the end of this video, you will be able to use Raspi to control your Home Assistant entities, so switches, lights, automations. And for today's demonstration, I will use a containerized Home Assistant installation in its latest version, so February 2023. And that's all for the introduction. So now let's go. Gude. Hacky, tacky, nerd stuff. Open voice enthusiast. Open voice, open future. Let's start by taking a look to the preparations on the Home Assistant side. As I've said, I'm running Home Assistant as containerized image with the latest release, February 2023. I've run it with the demonstration mode, so you can see some demonstration entities and this special card. Thanks for your support. Thanks for watching my videos, clicking the like button. And if you haven't already, please consider on subscribing to my channel. So. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for being part of my great voice technology community. If you would like Raspi to integrate with Home Assistant by using Home Assistant's API, so application programming interface, we need authorization. For that, Home Assistant provides long-lived access tokens, which you can easily create by clicking on the left navigation side on your username, scroll down to the end of the page to this section, long-lived access tokens. As you can see, I already created a Raspberry Dev token some time ago. If you have no access token yet, click Create Token, give it a name, and copy this token to your clipboard. Please do not just click the first character and uh, mark to the end of the string, because this is not the complete token. And as you can see, the token is way longer than what's shown by default. So. Just click Ctrl A to mark all, Ctrl C to copy it to clipboard. But in my case, I can delete this test token because I'm running this RASB dev token. Let's take a short look to Home Assistant's official REST API documentation and I will put links to all web pages I'm going to show you now in the description box below. So let's see this REST API. Important is this beer token. Keep beer token in mind. We will need it later on. When we scroll down to the end of the page, we see an HTTP POST endpoint called API slash intent slash handle. And to activate this endpoint, which will be used by Raspi later on, you have to set intent parameter to your configuration JAML. If you do not set this intent to your configuration file and reload uh, Home Assistant configuration, this special endpoint will not be available and Raspi will fail on connecting to Home Assistant. Another important documentation is Intent Script. Intent Script is a list of all intents and this text, like Get Temperature, has to match Raspi's intent name because this is the mapping criteria. With the simple text that will be returned, we have <laughs> degrees that will later on be spoken by Raspi's text-to-speech service. So now let's take a look to my simple configuration JAML file. And as you can see in line 17, here's this simple intent text and a list with intent scripts like get temperature, AC on, bad light on and automation all lights off. These examples are pretty simple and straightforward. Depending on your individual use cases, this logic might be way more complex. But for example, this automation all lights off will return all lights have been turned off and will just run an automation trigger with that special name. And I know there's no exception handling, no error handling. So this is just a pretty simple example to show you the basic on how stuff is going to work. Before going to Raspi, I would like to test my Home Assistant configuration, check if that beer token authentication is working, if the endpoint is available and these intents are working in Home Assistant before we add an additional complexity by adding 
Raspberry. You can use a curl example as it's written in the Home Assistant documentation, but I personally prefer using a tool called Postman. On the left side, I have prepared four example use cases for each of the intents you have seen in my configuration job. For example, get temperature. Let's click on that. Calling localhost, the Home Assistant port, and this endpoint API slash intent slash handle. Important is that authorization key, we have that beer token as it's written in the documentation and the token from the clipboard. Body is a simple JSON string with the name get temperature, which again is just the mapping from configuration jumble in Home Assistant. If I run this HTTP POST command, this should return the current outside temperature. And here we are. So, speech, we have 15.6 degrees. Next example is to switch AC on. We can first of all take a look to the current overview. AC is turned off at the moment, calling AC on and AC on is, let's see, this intent will return AC is now on, calling the service switch turn on with the entity ID switch.ac. So, not too complex. Let's run this command. AC is now on and check our browser and here we are. We have the automation to turn off all lights or turn on the bed light. So, for example, let's run the automation all lights off and as expected, all lights have been turned off. In our browser, all lights are turned off. So, this means configuration in Home Assistant, beer authentication token, configuration jumble with all the intents or intent handlings are working. Now it's time to add Rasby. For this, let's go to our Rasby page. And as you can see, as intent handler is Home Assistant already configured. If you click on the configuration, I've set it to localhost with the port and the access token. So the name for your token is not relevant, just the token. And please choose send intents to Home Assistant with that slash API slash intent slash handle endpoint, not the sense events using intents, not events. If we take a look to the sentences, we can now see a get temperature intent, please care about the name. It has to match Home Assistant's configuration. So get temperature. When we call this intent, this should basically return the text we have seen in the configuration jumble in Home Assistant. And this should be spoken by Raspi's text-to-speech service, with, which is configured to eSpeak at the moment. So let's run this. But do not forget to click the handle checkbox. We have 15.6 degrees. So audio quality is really low, but business logic worked. Let's try another one. Automation all lights off. So turn off all lights. Let's first of all check that there are some lights on. So and click this and recognize. All lights have been turned off. So works as expected. If you like that type of video, please give this video a thumb up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because this is really highly appreciated. Yeah, and that's it. I hope you found this short technical walkthrough on how to connect Raspberry with Home Assistant helpful. And I wish you all a nice rest of the day. And if you like, we might see us next time. Bye.